Hello, and welcome back. So, this is going to be on the NHS soon. Hmm, what can I tell you about this? Good things or bad things? Keep watching, let's find out. Okay, first of all, let's make things super clear. I am for technology. I am for flash glucose monitors and I am for continuous glucose monitors. Now, I say this because I have had messages. Messages which have attempted to persuade me or highlight why I shouldn't speak negatively, specifically about this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to speak negatively and I'm going to speak positively about whatever I want. And that's because I'm not affiliated with anybody. I'm not affiliated to Abbott. I'm not affiliated to any diabetes business or any healthcare business at all. They don't send me off to conventions. They don't ask me to speak. They don't send me any little gifts in the post. And they certainly don't pay me. So, what you get when you watch me is an honest opinion. And that's all it is. My opinion based upon what happens to me. That doesn't mean it's going to happen to you or anybody else. So, let's get into it, shall we? Um, you may have noticed, if you watched my video about two weeks back, um, I attached my first sensor. It was fine. And then on day six or seven, was it? It stopped working. There was a six millimole gap between what the sensor was telling me and what my actual blood glucose was. And it never caught up. So, popped that back in the box, sent it back to Abbott, and a new one turned up. A new one turned up the day after my Vegas holiday. And I've attached it, and for the last seven days, it's been amazing. It's been almost in line with my blood glucose. I can't think of anything more than one, one and a half millimoles out. And even then, the sensor was catching up. That's how it should be. That's how all the sensors should be. They should be as close as possible to your actual blood glucose. And if they're not super close, it has to be because you're spiking and it's catching up. Or you're going low and it's catching up again. If you're flatlining, it has to be quite close, super close. And that's the way it's been. And I found the whole thing amazingly useful in terms of effectively managing my type 1 diabetes. Um, I've stopped the spikes, except for the last few days, but that's kind of my fault. Too much carbs, too much sugar, too much junk. Um, I've identified when I'm going low, which means I stop falling into that super powerful hypo which takes you out for the day. I've had a few, a few lows. I've, I've fallen below four millimoles, but it hasn't been something which has shocked me. It hasn't been a, oh my God, I'm going hypo suddenly. It's been something I've been aware of happening. I've been five, six, oh, four, I'm going low. Time to get some carbs on board. Then it's slipped into hypo, but then it's quickly come back out of hypo. So none of those one or two millimole, oh my God, I'm gonna collapse hypos. And that's the purpose behind flash glucose monitors and continuous glucose monitors, in my opinion, to stop you having those bad times, highs or lows. Now, this one. 
it's on the NHS soon. And I firmly believe that that's a positive thing to happen. It has to be almost perfect, though, before the NHS take it on board. I assume the NHS and their managers and the people who allow new technology and healthcare to come into the system have done many, many checks on this. I assume that it isn't patient voice that's caused this to happen. Patient voice being part of it, because patient voice is massively important, of course. But beyond patient voice, there has to be a lot of checks. Because I do not believe sensors such as the one I had, the first one which stopped working, can be beneficial to anybody with type 1 diabetes. I'm slowing down how I'm speaking here because I'm being careful with my words. You need to have a sensor which is working. It needs to be close to your blood glucose, as I've said. The second that that slips out of your blood glucose, the second it stops working, the second that there's a large gap, the data held on your monitor or the app on your phone ceases to be applicable. So I'll show you some pictures here of what you can expect to see if you use this sensor and an app on your phone. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of information you can get, things such as uh, estimated A1C, and you could ignore that because mine says 20 days out of 90, so I would be amazed if my A1C is anything like 6.2. And there's a lot of other information showing you where your blood sugars have been up and down and where you can kind of sh maybe uh, shave a few millimoles off your blood sugars in the day and maybe in the evening if you adjust your uh, bolus and your basal. So that has to be what happens with your sensors. They have to be working perfectly. My fear is when the NHS take these on board, there's still going to be a few sensors out there that are going to find their way into the arms of NHS patients and they're not going to work perfectly and there's going to be issues and people are going to be on to their diabetic nurses and their consultants and then Abbott and they're going to inundate. I hope that isn't the case. That's my fear. I hope it isn't the case. Why do I fear that? If you follow me on Twitter, like a lot of you do, you may have seen a poll I put up about five, six days ago, just asking who has encountered any issues with their sensors and how many times have you needed to speak to Abbott support to get help. The number who selected never was quite low. Um, I believe something in the vicinity of 80% of the people that took part in the poll have had to contact Abbott support in the last year, more than once. Some people selected five times or more, and that's a lot. So how many people get this on the NHS and how many contact Abbott support or the NHS or their diabetic nurse or their consultant and spend a lot of time and energy asking questions, why doesn't it work? Why am I seeing huge gaps between the sensor and my blood glucose monitor? Is that going to cost the NHS money? Mm -hmm. Possibly. It's going to cost it time. Absolutely. If it doesn't work, we'll see what happens. I hope it does work, as I said. So, on the whole, and to close, flash glucose monitors continuous glucose monitors. I haven't used a continuous glucose monitor yet, but what I've what I've seen and what I'm led to believe, flash and continuous glucose monitors are positive. This one I'm calling positive. 
I be firmly believe when it works, it's amazing. It helps a lot. It's got to work though, and that's the point. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that useful. If you didn't, if you liked it, click the thumbs up button. If you want to watch more, over there. If you want to sub to the channel, over that side. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.